N57 and a BMW X5 um, and I've got some DPF codes and I want to just check some uh, look inside the inlet to make sure there isn't any carbon build up which is a common occurrence on these vehicles so I'll remove this engine cover pull out these intake pipes pop this off rip off this air box and then we come down to our turbo boost pipe onto the inlet manifold and as you can see the EGR is coming into the inlet manifold so if we take this off with this one clip here we'll be able to look directly up into the throttle and the EGR where it joins into the inlet manifold so we'll do that now I'm just taking a uh, hook or you could use the uh, screwdriver or something like that and what I'm doing is I'm going to just lift this you need to you need to push the boost pipe on. Makes it become visible. If it's pulled back, it won't let it pull up. So you need to push it on, and then you can pull the, the clip out. So push on, pull up, and pull the pipe off. Turn to one side. take our mirror and as you can see there is some oil in the bottom there so looking up the throttle with the mirror we can see the amount of carbon build up on the actual throttle plate itself uh, as you can see this is quite excessive so we're going to remove it from the vehicle and this now removed from the vehicle on the bench and you can just see up close the wedge shape of carbon build up that has ended up on the throttle plate itself and if we spin it over, we can also see it around the actual housing body of the uh, throttle itself as well. Then when we look up inside the intake, we notice the intake manifold is much worse in itself. There's about 10 millimeters around the bore of the manifold uh, intake itself. Um, and then in the center of this cylinder we're looking at is the actual EGR connection into the inlet manifold. So this is where the exhaust gases meet the inlet air. This carbon is all coming from the EGR and with mixing with the oil from the um, closed circuit breather system. Uh, if we look at the uh, swell flaps in, and the intake ports in the manifold they don't look too bad but then when we look inside the manifold through the port we can actually see lots of carbon build up in the walls of the manifold itself so this will need to be cleared out as it will affect the swell characteristics of the air I'm um, coming into the engine so this is a perfect time now to get this sonic cleaned um, and all this will then be gone and it will just be bare, back to bare plastic again. Now with the manifold off we can now look into the ports. Um, it's a little bit hard to show um, on camera just how small these ports are, how narrow they are. Uh, but you can see there is carbon build up in there and some of the throats around the valves and the valve stems are quite restricted. Uh, this isn't the worst one I've seen but this is um, also not the high, highest kilometre one that I've been uh, dealing with with this issue. Um, but we will be doing a worn up blast to clean all this carbon out. Uh, it would be a waste of time to clean the manifold and not clean the ports at the same time. So it is a worthy... Um, time investment and if we look there we can just see the stems clean on those open valves so you can just get an idea of uh, the, the difference we're also with the manifold off replacing this glow plug module as we do have limbus codes and we do have all six glow plug actuation codes also so all, um, all six glow plugs are logging codes we've tested the uh, resistance of the glow plugs and there is no fault so you can just see two 10 millimeter bolts holding it on and then two wiring plugs the bottom one being the main power from the battery I believe it runs from the alternator to it um, and then the other one being the wiring plug uh, running off to each glow plug so we can just pull this bottom one straight back and out it is quite a tight fit the other one we need to squeeze these tabs on each side of the uh, wiring plug so we'll just give them a squeeze and then we can pull this wiring plug back also 
Next we're going to have to pull this intake flap motor off and we're going to have to take this EGR cooler off because we're going to send this all away and get it cleaned. The map sensor also been, needs to be removed because we can't let it get soaked in the resolution. So we've got this intake port shut, uh, flap motor removed. Um, we just have to remove it from its drive into the uh, flap rod actuator. Uh, just unclip that and then the three T30 bolts and then we've also got the EGR cooler removed. Now if we look down the throat we can still see the amount of carbon build up that is around the sides. So we probably still have 70% of flow through here but it's just all that um, rough surface is going to cause a weird tumbling effect with the air. Um, and we're just going to need to get it all cleaned out basically. We have our inlet manifold and EGR cooler back from uh, Sonic Bath, so these have been cleaned and now there is no carbon inside and this is as if it were a brand new unit. As also with the EGR. So we'll just open these flaps up. We can see it's completely clean. And that's just plastic we're seeing inside, there are no big old mounds of carbon. And just look down the throat, perfectly clean. This is what we need, so we can now reassemble all this back together. So we've got our intake flat motor on the front of the manifold now ready. We just have to align this up with the actual flat motor rod itself, so when I push onto this, you can hear the two are now actually linked together. So all I did was put the two aligned and then leave it over. So then it was aligned onto it and I'm just pushing it. So you can hear the motor moving while I'm moving the flaps because this square is connected to the flaps. So if I move the flaps with my fingers. There we go. So we've got all the manifold back reassembled with all new seals for the inlet and for our throttle body. Uh, just worth noting this reservoir that is built into the inlet manifold here. Now this is only applicable for the, uh, the twin turbo and maybe the triple turbo ones also. Um, the single turbo like this variant doesn't actually require it as we don't have as many vacuum operated uh, items such as the, uh, the changeover flaps for the turbochargers and the vacuum controlled wastegate on the 40D uh, so this is not actually a necessary um, item hence why we don't actually have a, a vacuum line going onto it but this manifold is now ready to go back on and we will ne our next step will be to clean this throttle valve so this obviously wasn't sent away into the sonic bar because this is an electronic unit and we you know other than say maybe you know sub half submerging it it's just not worth um, the risk of of damaging uh, such an expensive electronic component so we're just cleaning this by hand and this obviously is quite accessible for getting in here and just uh, getting this carbon off this throttle plate so we'll do that next and then um, yeah we'll be ready for reassembly. So I've got all my ports taped up on my um, inlet ports just after doing the warnup last. Obviously um, we didn't want any warnup to be uh, ended up into them now that they're clean. Um, I've given a quick airline blow over the engine so we'll pull those uh, tape covers off all the ports now and we'll just show how clean um, our inlet ports are now there's no carbon on now for the walnut blasting. So you can just have see, clean, see how clean that valve is now. Same with that one there and we can just move the parts and see that they're all in a similar sort of state. It's hard to see the back ones, but you get the gist of what's going on. And this hole here is just the EGR port that runs through the head and up to that EGR cooler that's bolted onto the other side of the inlet manifold. So this is where we flip this over. This O-ring connection here is what's going to push into that cylinder head there. So that's EGR going into this cooler and then running into the running into this inlet inducer here. So yeah, and then uh, I believe we actually have transmission oil that's running through this cooler. And then this is the other EGR pipe which comes off the front EGR cooler which is down here. So we've got another EGR cooler here. We have a pipe which will come off, um, which bypasses down 
underneath the cooler down here somewhere. I think we can see just about see the flange down here. Down there, the two bolt EGR flange. So yeah, that's the bypass. So the EGR track is actually running through this cooler, through the cylinder head, and then out this hole down here, and then into this other cooler here, and then into the inlet manifold. So there, as you can see, the inlet manifold is now onto the vehicle. I've spun all these 10 mil bolts all up. We're just gonna do our final torques on the manifold, and then uh, we'll get our throw body and all our connections redone, and we can start putting our engine ECU back in place. As you can see, I moved the engine ECU and all the wiring loom out over this side of the engine just so we had a, a clear path across. As you can see, they all run across the inlet manifold and it will just make it so much harder to get this off. So, um, yeah, for the, it, it takes no time at all to get all this out. So it just makes it so much easier. As you can see, like, I have a clear shot now at this manifold for removal, reinstallation, etc. Um, yeah, and all the all the connections are nice and easy as well. Even the ones that run down, it's the all pressure sensor down here, all the all pressure switch, I should say, um, alternator, the aircon compressor, everything easy to get to. And this is all relatively easy also to disassemble. We'll just get that throttle body cleaned and, and installed also. Start off with a rough clean with a screwdriver, dig all the crap out, and then we'll go over and start using some maybe some solvents on a rag to clean off. So you can just see how much is actually being removed from that throttle. And actually, this is almost completely flat once this is all out of there. So you can just imagine the restriction we're having. Obviously, not massive restriction, but this just isn't how it should be. So. So this is as clean as we're probably realistically going to get it. Obviously there's some discoloration of the aluminium inside, which isn't a big problem. I might just give it a nap throttle plate just so that one wipe, more wipe over. But realistically, that's all we really are looking for, is just a, a clean finish as such. Like I say, this is all staining. I can't get this out even with Carby Clean. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that I'm not using the Carby Clean direct onto the throttle. I'm actually spraying it onto a rag and then wiping it over the throttle itself. So don't spray into it because it will go into the shafts and the carby clean will go inside here and melt all the plastic gears and eat all the insides up. So yeah, just a, a tip for don't mess your throttle body up by uh, cleaning it with carby clean directly from the spray can. So we can bolt this back on the car now and then we can finish our manifold uh, insulation. So this is what was removed from inside that throttle body. So you can just see the amount of carbon buildup and sludge that was built up due to the EGR being next to it and the intake breather oil being blasted through the uh, the boost piping. So we can see we're almost pretty much back together now, the manifold on and all the wiring loom back over the engine.